Okay, here's the question. It says, uh, G is a function defined for all real numbers except for negative 3. Also, let G prime, the derivative of G, be defined as this. Hey, look, look, they gave us the G prime. That's important to note because some of you guys start solving the problem and treating G prime like it's G, and that, that'll totally mess you up. Now, the question says, on which intervals is G decreasing? Shh. Listen. It says, on which intervals is G decreasing? So we have, we have this is our scenario, guys. We have, we have G here, and we have G prime. Okay, G prime was defined for us. It, they, they gave it to us. It was X. It is X over X plus 3. Okay, now, when I'm looking at a G prime graph, how does that relate to the G graph? How does it relate? Now, I think I know, I mean, I think you guys know that G prime uh, represents the slopes of G. But I don't think you really are making enough connections there. Because G prime, the Y values um, on G prime represent what on G? Come on, come on. What are the Y values on G prime on G? You guys don't know? Come on, think about this. The y values on G prime represent the slope of G. The y values on G prime represent the slope of G. And slope tells us if G is increasing or decreasing. And that's, that's what we care about. We care about that fact. That's how you're going to know this stuff. Okay, so it says, on which intervals is G decreasing? And so what do we want to know? We want to know where G prime is negative. Are you guys still with me? We want to know where G prime is negative. So do you guys know what this graph looks like? I mean, it has like uh, what are those. What's this thing called right here? <laughs> Dots. <laughs> it's called an asymptote, right? Okay, man, you sound like you're dying over there. Okay, uh, it's, it's an asymptote. Okay, so do you guys know how to graph the rest of it? Okay, there's, there's strategies. Um, Oh, do you guys know what the horizontal asymptote is for this? It's positive one. Because uh, the degree on the numerator is the same as the degree on the denominator, so I take the leading coefficients and divide them, so our horizontal asymptote is at x or y equals 1. Okay, uh, now we could have, uh, in this section, we can have a curve right here, or we could have a curve right here. It's one of those. Okay, so if we can find the y-intercept, we can know if it's going to be above or below. The y-intercept is really easy to find because all you have to do to find the y-intercept is plug in 0. So let's do that. g prime of 0 is 0 over 0 plus 3. So we get 0 over 3. What is that? So this is the point right here. All right, so we know that the curve goes like this. And then this side, the curve would be on the opposite side. And if you're not quite sure... What you can do is you can see if you have an x-intercept because if it was down here, it would cross the x-axis. So to see if this has an x-intercept, what you do is you set it equal to zero. You have x over x plus three equals zero. Um, you multiply both sides by x plus three and this cancels out and you have x equals zero. Where is the only x-intercept? At zero. Therefore, I know the curve looks like this. And so you know what you wanna know? You want to know where G prime is negative because the Y values on G prime represent the slope of G. And if you know the slope of G, you know if you're increasing or decreasing. So we want to know where G prime is negative. Students, look at my graph. Where is G prime negative? From negative 3 to 0. So that's, uh, that's not including negative 3. And so it has to be this one right here. Let us see. Okay, now there is a different way of doing this. The other way is finding critical values and then doing a sine line graph. Now I want to show you guys um, the other way because you might like it. Now watch and see if you get it. Okay, now if you wanted to find critical values, you need to know where G prime equals 0 or where G prime is not existing. Okay, uh, now because the denominator has an x plus 3, we know that g prime would not exist at negative 3. So that means negative 3 
is one of my critical values. He is a CV right there. Okay, the other way you find uh, critical values is you set g prime equal to zero, which we did right here. So we said g prime equals zero, and what do we get? We got zero. So g prime of zero equals zero. So that means we have another critical value right here. Now, in these intervals, we have negative infinity to negative three, we have negative three to zero, and we have zero to positive infinity. We have three intervals. Uh, let me write it out this way. There's an interval. There's an interval. There's an interval, okay? Or you can write it in uh, inequality notation, which is how they did it right here, okay? Uh, negative infinity to negative three would be anything less than three, so uh, negative three, so this one would be, represent that interval. Uh, negative 3 to 0 is um, this one right here. Yeah, x is less than negative 3 and... Oh, wait. No, this one's not the right answer. This one's the right answer. Yeah, it's C. I don't know why it's... Why did I circle D? Because that's, uh, that's, uh, giving, us, that's giving us um another interval. That's everything greater than negative 3. That would be, like, everything here. Um, anyways, okay. So what you're going to do here is you're trying to find out... If uh, you're positive or negative in this interval, if you're positive or negative in this interval, and if you're positive or negative in this interval, how would you find out if you're positive or negative? Well, you can test values. You can do tester points. I can test a negative four, and I'm picking negative four just because it's a small negative, and it's, it's below negative three. Uh, I could test negative one. I'm picking that one because it's between negative three and zero, and I can test positive one. Okay, and what you do is you take each of these and you plug them into G prime to see if you get a positive or negative num number. All right, so let's, let's do all that. So we have G prime of negative 4. That would be negative 4 over negative 4 plus 3. What do you get? Negative 4 over negative 1. Is that a positive or a negative number? Positive. So I circle positive. Uh, and then we try negative 1. So I go G prime of negative one. I get negative one over positive two. That's a negative number. So we know um, we're we know that G is decreasing in this interval. We know that G is increasing in this interval. Um, and then we have G prime of positive one. We get one over four. Hey, it's a positive number, so we'd circle positive. So G is increasing, decreasing, and then increasing, which is actually true. Increasing, decreasing, and then increasing. Sorry, this is not this. <laughs> so this is above the x-axis. This is below the x-axis. This is above the x-axis. Plus, minus, plus. Okay. Now this is not G, because we don't even we don't even know what G is. So. Uh, we still get the same answer. We get this interval, negative 3 to 0, which is this one right here. Let her see.